Good morning. It's so good to see you. We are in uh, John's Gospel this morning, and it says, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave uh, with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Uh, we've been talking this year about God wanting us to thrive in our lives. Jesus said that he came that we might have life to the full, not just barely get by. And so we looked at God's wisdom for the, at the beginning of the year, because when we have access to God's wisdom, we can thrive. And then we looked at emotionally healthy uh, spirituality, that when we are emotionally healthy and spiritually healthy, we tend to thrive. And then we spent quite a bit of time looking at freedom, because when we walk in freedom, we tend to thrive. And now we're going to spend some time talking about the Holy Spirit, because when we partner with the Holy Spirit in life, we tend to thrive. So why would I want to do a series on the Holy Spirit? Maybe some of you, that makes you a little bit anxious. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about why you might be anxious and what to think about what Scripture has to say. But what are the reasons? Well, I think a lot of followers of Jesus feel a little left out. They hear stories of other people who have these incredible experiences in God, and they haven't had an experience like that, and so they assume maybe I'm missing something. And then uh, there are some people who've been made uncomfortable by someone else who said they were doing something in the name of the Spirit. Maybe they, they were challenged in a way they were not ready for, or maybe they were startled in a way they were not prepared for. And so some people, if we don't understand how the Spirit works, uh, we can be uncomfortable around people who claim to be led by the Spirit. And then uh, thirdly, I think believers long for something more than just uh, the routines of Christianity, which are things like coming together today, or maybe reading scripture or prayer. And there comes a point in our lives when we wonder, is there something more than, than those basic elements? And the Holy Spirit has a lot to say about that. Um, and then there are some who, who feel like spiritual work is limited to spiritual spaces, like spiritual work zones. You know, have you ever been out on the thruway and you're going through a work zone and they, they veer your, your car over to the side and they tell you to slow down and, and, uh, and you can see people working and they've got the road dug up and we, we know that's a work zone. Some people think the Holy Spirit is like that. He, there are places that he works, like rooms like this. And what we need to realize is that God is not looking for dedicated spaces. He's looking for dedicated hearts. It doesn't matter what space. How many are glad this morning that God can do anything anywhere? Not just special places, right? And then lastly, I would, I would like you to experience a lifetime journey with the Holy Spirit. Not just a moment or an experience, but a lifetime journey. We read it this morning. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Where I'd like to start this morning is the recognition that the Holy Spirit is actually a gift from God. And this might not seem like a really big deal, but it's a huge starting point. If we don't start here, we'll get to places that we don't want to be, and we'll probably wind up doing things we would prefer not to do. Peter would actually repeat this idea that the Holy Spirit is a gift when the church was launched on the day of Pentecost, and there were thousands of people who have gathered, and Peter preaches his very first message, and this is what he says. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far off. He's not just talking geographically, people who are far away, but he's talking generationally, people who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. I think it's very easy for us to presume that the presence and the power of God are earned in some way. That if I, if I read enough scripture, then I will qualify for something of the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. If I pray enough hours, then I will qualify in some way for the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. If I could live a better life, if I could conquer some of my habits or step into areas of opportunity, if I did that, then I think maybe God would be willing to give me something of his Holy Spirit. If we could do more, then we would receive more. And that completely misunderstands the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift, a gift. You don't earn the Holy Spirit. Our salvation is a gift, we understand that. The Holy Spirit is also a gift. So I just want you to let that sink in this morning. The Holy Spirit is a gift. It's not something you qualify for. So the currency of God's kingdom is grace. Everything else is a counterfeit. Counterfeit currency doesn't work in God's kingdom. And so we begin with the idea of grace. If you don't understand grace, you'll have a hard time understanding the Holy Spirit. So the first thing was that the Holy Spirit is a gift. But this is what I want you to see. The Holy Spirit is a friend not a force. The Holy Spirit is a friend, not a force. Some people act like they are Jedi masters learning to tap into the force so that they can do remarkable things. That is not Christianity. That is science fiction. There is a difference. One of the reasons people say and do things that hurt other people in the name of the Spirit is because they're acting as though the Holy Spirit is a force that they're tapping into. And so we have to learn to see that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a friend. It's a very different way to think about it. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. An advocate. An advocate is someone who supports and promotes the interest of someone else. The Holy Spirit is not in our world for himself. The Holy Spirit is here to be an advocate. If you've ever had to go into a courtroom situation or if you've ever watched courtroom dramas, on television, you will know that there are lawyers, there are attorneys, and these are people who represent other people. They know the law. They know the rules of the game in the courtroom. They're there to advocate. You hear it? Advocate for someone else. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. There are social advocates that champion certain issues and ideas so that our world can be a better place. An advocate is someone who comes to the aid of someone else. One of the greatest things you could ever learn to do in your life is to advocate for other people. There's incredible power in advocacy. The moment you advocate for someone else, the value of that person goes up in other people's eyes. It's one of the great gifts that we can give in our world. So the Holy Spirit is not like a character in a video game, all right? Where in the video game, you, ha you have to achieve, you have to accomplish, you have to do something or acquire something in order to power up become the stronger version of yourself. You can gather coins, you, you can defeat uh, 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 certain characters, you, you can get weapons, and then you hope you have enough to face the next challenge. That's not how the Bible describes the Holy Spirit. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. The Holy Spirit is the way God is present and active today. The Holy Spirit is the way God is present and active today. I didn't create that to rhyme on purpose. That's just a happy accident. Would you say that with me? 
The Holy Spirit is the way God is present and active today. He has come to be our friend. He has come to be our teacher. He has not come to be our spiritual battery. And yet, a lot of people think of the Holy Spirit in those terms. When God gives us the Holy Spirit, he's giving us himself. When God is giving us the Holy Spirit, he's giving us himself. Now, you probably know someone who's a plumber or an electrician or a healthcare professional or a police officer or an engineer, and those are descriptors of the work they do, but it doesn't help us understand the person they are. And in the Bible, we see a lot of descriptors of the work that the Holy Spirit does. For example, there's, there's, uh, there's places where it says the Holy Spirit is like a wind. There's places where it says the Holy Spirit is like a fire. There's places where the, it says the Holy Spirit is like a dove. It doesn't mean that the wind is the Holy Spirit. A dove is the Holy Spirit. It's giving us information about the kind of work or the way the Holy Spirit works, but it's, that doesn't tell us about him. We have to find out who he is. There are ways to describe what the Holy Spirit is doing, but that doesn't mean we understand who the Holy Spirit is. So there are many things the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Once again, this is not the outcome of a force in our world. It's the work of a friend in our lives. You might think, oh, this is, I thought you were going to get into something deep. You can't go deep until you start from the right space. If we misunderstand who the Holy Spirit is, where the Holy Spirit is, why the Holy Spirit is here, then we will wind up in places that we don't want to go doing things that we would prefer or other people would prefer we didn't do. Jesus said it, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. See, the world doesn't recognize the Holy Spirit. And our assumptions, and we all have assumptions, our assumptions about the Holy Spirit are more likely to conceal what the Holy Spirit is doing in our world than to reveal. If we want to understand what the Holy Spirit is doing, we have to go to the source of the one who's giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is Jesus. And we have to understand that this is a promise that God made and he's keeping. And we have to understand that the greatest resource to understand this actually comes from scripture. It's not this issue of if you say these words in this way, then the Holy Spirit will be activated in your life. If you pray a certain amount of time, then the Holy Spirit will be activated in your life. If you read a certain number of chapters a day, then the Holy Spirit would be activated in your life. Life in the Spirit, life in the Spirit is a life of friendship with God. That's where it starts. Life in the Spirit is not a cheat code to a higher level of living. It's friendship with God. What did the Bible say? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. And the same motive that provides salvation into our life is the same motive that provides the gift of the Holy Spirit. The reason God gives the Holy Spirit is because he loves us. The Holy Spirit is the way we experience God's love. The Holy Spirit is the way we experience God's love. Paul would talk about this when he wrote his letter to the Roman church. He said, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I want you to think about this. Have you ever had a sense of how much God loves you? Not that we completely comprehend or understand it, but you just get a sense of that. This is what I would want you to know. If you've ever had a sense of God's love for you, that was actually the work of the Holy Spirit. There's no way for us to get a sense of God's love for us outside of God's Spirit doing a work in our heart. 
That's something that the Holy Spirit was creating. My mother, when she came to know Christ and had an experience with the Holy Spirit, the way she always described it to people who would talk to her about it was that it felt to her like someone had poured liquid love into her life. How many, it would be okay with you if God just gave you more love in your life, yeah? That's not enough. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a great thing? Just give us more love. We are often looking for something to do or something to happen instead of someone. The Holy Spirit is our friend and he's with us. The Holy Spirit wants to be with us every day, not just on certain days. You know? Oh, we better get to church today. We don't want to miss the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is everywhere all the time. And, and if we think he only shows up in rooms like this on days like this, we're going to miss most of what the Holy Spirit does in our world. He wants us to enjoy the amazing and generous gifts that God has given to us. He doesn't want us to miss out on this incredible generosity that the Heavenly Father pours into our lives. And the question is not, does God give us things to enjoy? The question is, do we notice them? This is part of the work of the Holy Spirit. He opens our eyes, our ears. It gives us attention to a focus on what is available to us right now because of the generosity of God. Do you have a close friend? More and more people say they do not. But if you do, you should recognize that. That's a gift from God. That's not just your personality and your work ethic got you a good friend. That God brings people into our life to support us and us them. Or how about a delicious meal? Anybody here ever had a delicious meal? <laughs> I shouldn't tell this story, but I was, I was looking to hire a staff member and, and this person came in from out of state. And uh, so I took him out to eat because you can get to know something about a person sitting across the table from them. And uh, this person, I, I, it's hard to describe their eating habits. I've, I've seen it in animals. <laughs> but rarely in people. I mean, it was like a starving wolf that was gulping down huge sections of, of food. And, and, and I, well, I, I have to be careful what I say. Th this person is not around here and they're not on staff. <laughs> he would have scared you. <laughs> to, to be eating a meal and just actually enjoy it One of the works of the Holy Spirit is to help us enjoy the good things that God has put into our life. And we go through days taking so much for granted. We don't even notice. That there's a certain amount of energy and strength required to get through our day. And, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us that strength and that energy. And we say, yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm tired. If you're tired for no reason, I don't know what to tell you, but if you're tired because you did something, good for you. Good for you. The, the stranger who showed you some kindness, have you ever had someone do that? I, I was going through a season when I was, I was trying to sort through what it was that God wanted me to do next in my life. And I remember sitting at a table in a, in, at, at a retreat center with a, a bunch of men and, and a guy came over and he says, I don't know if this means anything to you or not, but he said, I, I, I wrote this down and I felt like I was supposed to share it with you. And, he, and he, he had written down the verse of scripture that is one of my most significant life verses. And it helps clarify that season of my life. I am so grateful that he was sensitive in that moment, moment to share that with me. And I am so grateful that when I received it, I noticed it. Instead of thinking, I am dealing with a lot of stuff. The last thing I need is someone passing notes to me in the retreat center. I thought we stopped that in middle school. The Holy Spirit helps us love others. Now, this is where we run into some challenge because for a lot of us, we assume that love is a feeling of infatuation. And some of us 
have no access to the people we're infatuated with because they're famous and they're rich and they don't know us from Adam. And then there are other people that we were infatuated with, but after some close proximity, the infatuation has faded just a little bit. And love is not infatuation. Love is a simple decision. Please hear this. Love is a simple decision that I always want what's best for that person no matter what. That's why when you look at a, a wedding service, you never, if, if you've ever listened to the vows, there's not a single emotional word in the vows. It's all decision. It's all saying that under any circumstance, no matter what, I will act in your best interest for the rest of my life. That is love. When we experience the Holy Spirit, we experience his grace. And when we express the Holy Spirit, we express God's grace. God wants to help us accomplish things that we are not able to do on our own. So he sends his Holy Spirit as a friend to help us with those things. The, for example, uh, this, some people think that uh, uh, after they came to know Christ, that's when the Holy Spirit started to work in their lives. I don't know how to tell you this, but the Holy Spirit was at work in your life long before you ever knew anything about following Jesus. He was at work before your conversion. Long before you thought about God, the Holy Spirit was already at work in your life. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings spiritual things to our attention. Some people, some people think that they just come up with stuff on their own. You know, I was just wondering, I was thinking, I, I, there must be more to life than just what I'm seeing. Where, where do you think that thought came from? Do you think people just naturally think those kinds of thoughts? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I was just curious if there was a God, I wonder what God would be like. I wonder what work he would be doing in our world today. That, that is not just a human imagination. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I think I might need help from God. I mean, to recognize we need help is a natural thing and to reach out to others to ask for help is a natural thing. But to turn to God, what would cause us to turn to a being that we've never seen and know absolutely nothing about unless there's something of the work of the Spirit that is going on. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us accept what God, that we've been, we've been part, made part of God's family. He's the one that helps us with that. He's the one who helps lead us to Christ. He's the one that helps us place our faith and trust in him. That's all the work of the Holy Spirit. And people say, well, I'm going to follow Christ. Good. You know who's going to help you follow Jesus? That's the Holy Spirit. If we try to live a Christian life on our own strength, we will become discouraged. We don't have what it takes to make it on our own. So the question is, so, so how, do I, how do I get help from the Holy Spirit to live this life? And I wanna make this as simple as possible. How would you ask any friend for help? It, it really is, I'll, I'll ask the worship team to come up. It, it really is an amazing thing to me that um, we'll need help when we recognize it. Our strength is insufficient. Our knowledge is, is insufficient. Our resources are insufficient. And we just need help from God. And, and we'll start doing things like this. I'll just pray more. I'll just read more. I'll just, I'll show up to more Sundays and That's not treating the Holy Spirit like a friend. That's treating the Holy Spirit like a video game. You can actually say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I don't think I can get through this all by myself. I need someone's support today. And please understand, when you ask the Holy Spirit for help, 
a lot of people make this mistake. What they think they're doing is just asking the Holy Spirit to make something easy for them. You know, if you're in school and you're heading into an exam, Holy Spirit, please. I know, I know you said you'd help me remember everything Jesus said. Could you also help me remember everything the professor said? That'd be great. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's presence in our life is not about making our life easier. It's about making our life effective. That wherever we go, we're this extenders of the grace of God. And here's the challenge is if you really want to be led by the Spirit in your life, you have to know that the Holy Spirit will likely lead you into rooms you would rather stay out of and in the conversations you would rather avoid because those rooms are challenging and those conversations can be awkward. But the Holy Spirit knows that that's where the grace of God is most needed today. The Holy Spirit has not come to lead you away from those rooms and away from those conversations. If that's what you want, you don't need the Holy Spirit. You just need to live like a hermit for the rest of your life. And that's not spiritual. Um, example, uh, her name is Mandy. Uh, she's sitting in the hospital today. And this week, they're going to attempt something that's experimental. And uh, in fact, her parents are here this morning. And they hope that it will be effective with the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Absent of her doing anything or absent of this being effective, she probably does not have 90 days left in our world. So when I think about things like that, I don't know what to do or say. I know you think there's a, a, a book for pastors, Pastoring for Dummies. Let's go to page 148 and it says, in the case there's an experimental treatment being placed on someone and it's life, you know, a life thing, say this, it's not there. But you know what? If I can pray a prayer like this, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray. I don't know where to be right now. Would you help me? And then just pay attention to the thoughts that come to your mind. Because the Holy Spirit can, can inspire us. He, he, can, he can give us inspiration. And you pay attention to that. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do that right now. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. And I'm going to ask you to ask the Holy Spirit just for Mandy right now. Just for Mandy, Holy Spirit, what can I do? What can I pray to partner with you in what's going on in her life today? Heavenly Father, you have not left us on our own. The Holy Spirit is the way you are present and active today. Open our eyes and our hearts to receive all he wants to do in our lives and in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll stand to our feet this morning.